Joining me now is Senator Bill Nelson, Democrat from Florida, who has urged the president to leverage all available resources to help the people of Puerto Rico. He joins me now. And Senator, uh, you and, and Marco Rubio, who also represents Florida, ha have been sort of some of the loudest voices uh, on this. Do you think the response has been adequate? In a word, no. And the mayor's plea uh, pretty much says it all. Um, I do think, since they brought in last night a three-star general, that what Marco and I have been calling for is the military. You've got all of the food, fuel, uh, water, uh, medical supplies. They're in the ports, but they can't get out into the interior. And that's what the U.S. military is trained for. They're trained for these long logistical lines of getting things where they need to be. And so as I quizzed the three-star general this morning, uh, I, I asked him, what's coming in? So helicopter uh, parts are coming in. Uh, they've got truck parts coming in. They've got an army a battalion that can move things. That's coming in. Uh, but the comfort ship is going to be another five days before it gets there. Uh, if all of those troops get in, but how long is it going to take them to get in? Uh, this is not the finest hour of the United States government uh, waiting nine days before you get command and control with the U.S. military there. Remember General Honore, the three-star? It took him getting in to Katrina, New Orleans, and finally got things moving. Uh, yeah, I have to say, I, I've been in contact uh, fairly regularly with people on the island, and, and what their dispatches say to me is that uh, it's, it, it's been a very slow line. I mean, in particularly areas outside San Juan, you're still dealing, we're nine days in, no power, no communication, and no drinking water. I mean, there are still people, half the island doesn't have drinking water, you don't have fuel. I mean, I, I guess the question is, how long could people be expected to wait for these Americans, be expected to wait for these vital necessities? Americans waiting for vital necessities from Americans. Uh, that's, that's what's so frustrating about it. Uh, I do believe in my, in a, essence, a cross-examination of the general uh, by telephone this morning that he understands what he's got to do, but he's got to get all of those troops in to help him move those things into the other parts of the island. Um, the president, uh, the context here, of course, is that uh, Puerto Rico is deeply in debt. It, it did not have a, the statutory ability to declare bankruptcy. There was a, a, a law called the PROMESA Act, uh, which set up a sort of austerity regime there. It will need billions and billions and billions of dollars to rebuild. This is something that one person on the ground said close to societal collapse. Are you confident that while the president's talking about how to work out how it's paid for in its debts, that Puerto Rico is not going to be begging, uh, essentially, for the money it needs to rebuild? Well, in essence, at the end of the day, I believe Puerto Rico will get the money. But, Chris, you know there are people in the Congress that they won't even increase the debt ceiling so we can pay our bills. I mean, there's this kind of mentality. So with the bills mounting in Texas and Florida, the Virgin Islands, and now Puerto Rico, uh, I think it's going to be a big bill. And I think it's going to be for the real, real long term in Puerto Rico. Uh, we're seeing a utility electrical system that has been totally destroyed. We're going to have to start thinking creatively. Instead of necessarily stringing wires, Maybe we ought to start putting solar panels in some of these remote uh, villages and small towns uh, so that they would have some self-sustaining in mm. the future. Um, Puerto Rico is, is, has an outstanding debt uh, largely owned by bondholders and traded uh, by hedge funds uh, in the distressed debt markets. I think it's around $70 billion. Will there be voices in Congress calling for some cancellation or forgiveness of some of that debt? Well... This voice has already started that uh, by saying earlier this morning that they ought to be cutting some slack on their debt payments. Uh, PROMESA, the board that was set up to oversee the finances, they are first in line for all the debts. But with this tragic uh, humanitarian crisis, 
uh, the bondholders are going to have to give some give in this situation. Uh, you would you would think so. I mean, the regime that's been set up with PROMESA is, is an austerity regime, and this is not uh, an austerity time for the people that are nine days into not having clean drinking water. Senator Bill Nelson, thank you for making time tonight. I really do appreciate it. Thanks, Chris.